Welcome, my name is Frank Adler and I'm one of the founders and managing partner of Operational Excellence Consulting. We are a small, well-respected consulting company here in Southern California and we are partnering with other consulting companies to ensure that we are providing the best services and solutions to our clients. Welcome, my name is Frank Adler and I'm one of the founders and managing partner of Operational Excellence Consulting. We are a small, well-respected consulting company here in Southern California and we are partnering with other consulting companies to ensure that we are providing the best services and solutions to our clients. Achieving operational excellence requires the successful implementation of an integrated business execution system that effectively and seamlessly integrates the following four building blocks strategy deployment, performance management, process excellence and high-performance work teams. The primary objective of process excellence is to design, develop and deploy processes that enable an organization to execute better than everyone else in their business or market. Lean management is one of the key methodologies many organizations apply to achieve exactly that. Starting around 1910, Henry Ford fashioned the first comprehensive manufacturing strategy. He took all the elements of a manufacturing system, means people, machines, tooling and products, and arranged them in a continuous system for manufacturing the Model T automobile. Ford is considered by many to be the first practitioner of lean and just-in-time manufacturing. Ford's success inspired many others to copy his methods, but most of those who copied did not understand the fundamentals and failed. Around 1949, uh, at the Toyota Motor Company, Taiichi Ono and Shigeo Chingo uh, began to incorporate Ford production and other techniques into an approach called Toyota Production System, or TPS. In 1990, uh, James Womack wrote a book called The Machine That Changed the World, uh, a comparative study of Japanese, American and European automotive assembly plants. What was new was the term lean manufacturing. Today, uh, lean has many names, for example, lean manufacturing or lean office or lean administrative or lean enterprise and has been successfully deployed and utilized in uh, many industries. Lean management is principle based. Uh, the five lean principles were first published in 2003 by James Womack and uh, Daniel Jones in their book Lean Thinking. Uh, companies like Lockheed Martin, for example, have adopted these principles to define their own guiding lean principles. Uh, the first principle uh, requires organizations to define value from their customer's perspective. Once value has been defined, an organization defines and maps their processes or value streams uh, for each product or service and challenges all non-value added steps or wastes uh, currently necessary to create and deliver uh, these products and services. Uh, the objective is to add nothing than value. Principle 3 and 4 uh, are about creating flow and establishing pull. Make the product or service creation and delivery process flow through the remaining uh, value added steps as well as introducing pull based um, on customer demand between all process steps where continuous flow is possible. And the last principle addresses the culture of continuous improvement uh, to achieve perfection. Lean management differentiates between the three types of activities in an organization's process. Value added, business value added and non-value added. The three criteria for a value added activity are first, the customer wants you to do it or will pay for it. 
Second, the material or information is being processed or transformed into the final products or services. And third, it is done right the first time. Business value and non-value added activities are called wastes or mura in the lean language. During lean workshops and on-site lean implementation activities, I see often processes that have less than 1-2% to value added activities. Perfection is not when there is no more to add, but no more to take away. Lean management calls non-value added activities wastes, and Taichi Ono, one of the key contributors to Toyota's lean deployment, uh, identified the seven wastes shown here on the slide. Some organizations are using an eight waste called underutilization of people. The seven wastes form an acronym, Tim Wood, where T stands for transportation, uh, I stands for inventory, M for motion, W for waiting, O for overproduction and overprocessing, and D for defects. Every lean implementation has to start with the seven wastes and everyone in the organization needs to understand these wastes, needs to be able to identify them and needs to be passionate about reducing uh, and or eliminating them. Without this strong foundation, a lean implementation effort is likely to fail. Many companies create visuals like posters and so forth to visualize uh, the seven wastes. The third lean principle is about creating flow in an organization's processes or value streams. Flow is the key to just-in-time implementation and one of the key pillars of a lean enterprise. Perfect or continuous flow enables an organization to operate uh, based on customer demand. Theoretically, flow means single-piece flow uh, with single work in process or inventory in between processes. Also experience shows that allowing one or a few un units of work in process in between processes uh, is sometimes more effective. Here we show uh, just some of the benefits an organization can enjoy if it is able to continuously improve the flow uh, of its value streams. One of them is the ability to respond faster to external changes in demand or requirement uh, for products and services of an organization. Methods and tools to enable flow in an organization's value streams include the following. Elimination of handoffs uh, or simple paperwork, 5S visual workplace organization, uh, the implementation of Kanban scheduling systems to reduce and manage work in process, and the reduction of uh, change over time through so-called SMET single minute exchange of dies. The fourth lean principle is about establishing pull in an organization's processes or value streams. A process is pull driven if the upstream process is driven by the downstream process. Uh, if only defined quantities of work in process are allowed between processes. If workstations share the same tuck time, uh, means customer demand, or have been balanced uh, to a tuck time. And if clear visual signals like Kanbans are used throughout the process to move parts, products and or information. Here we show just some of the benefits an organization can enjoy if it is able to continuously improve the ability 
to perform its value streams based on demand pool. Similar to the implementation of flow, one of the benefits is the ability to respond faster to external changes and to reduce uh, work in process. Methods and tools to enable flow based on pull in an organization's value stream include the following. One of the key methods uh, organizations are, are utilizing to create a pull based value stream is the implementation of Kanbans or Kanban scheduling systems. Uh, Kanbans are often linked uh, to so-called Hejunka boards that enables an organization to level load its internal operations, even if the external demand of its products or services uh, is not consistent. A visual I often use during uh, our workshops is that lean organizations are more like a ballet where critical aspects of that organization's value streams are well coordinated and orchestrated. And while non-lean organizations are more behaving like an ice hockey team, uh, everybody is very busy but not necessarily productive. Things are getting done despite all the issues and challenges. And every day we will have some heroes that just made it happen. Lean management is not only about the implementation of the five lean principles and the supporting methods and tools. Lean management is as much about the culture an organization is able to create to nurture a constant dissatisfaction with the current state and the desire to continuously improve an organization's processes. Uh, as shown on this slide, if the comfort zone is, is too large, people will choose to stay in this comfort zone. Lean organizations are able to create a very small comfort zone, but a very large and safe learning zone for their employees. So the culture aspect of lean management has to be part of any lean deployment. If you are interested in workshops about lean management or would like to discuss how to deploy lean management in your organization, uh, please call us and we'll discuss and uh, send you a proposal. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction and uh, hopefully we will hear from you in the near future.